Good day, Mr. Israel. Could you please do a focused motor exam on the lower limbs of this patient? How are you, ma'am? Good, good. My name is Israel Shingenge. I'm a fourth year medical student. I've been asked by a doctor to do a motor exam. It will involve me looking at you, touching you, and telling you to do comments. Is it okay with you? All right. So, a very important on a motor exam of the lower limb to just have a look at the legs. Okay, move as much as possible to try to make sure you pick up any obvious scars. Are you seeing any obvious scars? I mentioned them, they are very important. Another thing that you can inspect for, are you seeing any obvious involuntary movement, okay? Involuntary movement, it can be choreathetoid or whatever movement that you are seeing, okay? Again, you can inspect for tremors. Remember, tremors is supposed to just other involuntary movement. Tremors are usually having a very regular sort of very regular uh, movement as opposed to other things like choreathetoid, they may be very irregular and untimed, okay? It's useful to see. Another thing that you is very important to see, are you seeing any obvious wasting, okay? And key thing is that you can also pick up wasting, especially you want to compare exactly where I'm touching here, okay? You want to press there and you typically pick up very subtle weakness and you do not want to miss this, especially in the lower leg. Now add this, it's very important and I just want to add it especially on inspection. You may enter an OSCE and you find this leg is lying like this. This one is lying exactly like this which you expect in a normal patient but this is externally rotated. You should pick it up from inspection that no doctor, I'm seeing an obvious abnormal posture or no, the right leg appears to be uh, uh, externally rotated. I think the leg is mostly weak. Okay, and again, you're already thinking of pathologies. It's the same if both, you find them very outstretched like that, you're thinking they are both weak because they are both externally rotated. Again, those are subtle things just from far that you can pick up that the patient has a pathology. All right, up to here, okay. Again, are you seeing any obvious fasciculation? Remember, fasciculation can be spontaneous where you can see, or sometimes it may need to, to twitch it just to see, so it's induced which we are not seeing, okay? We are done with the inspection of the lower limbs, okay? Then we want to move on to the toe, okay? Remember, then could you please relax, okay? Again, you keep your head looking at the foot of the, or, 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 of the patient, so you want to, what you call, leg roll, okay? So if something is pasty, the leg is pasty, it will move like a robot, almost a, almost like it's moving exactly with the movement of the, of the of the leg, okay? That shows you that it's very, very spastic, okay? So increase tone, as opposed to when it's very floppy, the, the, the foot on top of the ankle will be hyper, very, very floppy. Of course, hypotonia is always hard to elicit if you haven't examined enough patients, but you should be able to see that the, the leg, as the, uh, the leg moves, is very exaggerated okay otherwise normal tone you are supposed to have a bit of a leg however not so exaggerated as it's in hypotonia so you just want to leg roll again we are looking there and you see that that's normal and immediately you want to lift up again remember specificity is velocity dependent and this is normal so if it was increased you see that it too typically catch you then relaxes okay that's what you call specificity again here you just want to leg roll, okay, just relax, and then back, okay, that's normal tone, all right, once you know that you are done with your tone, then you want to go to your, your power, then could you please lift up this hand, just lift it up, okay, put it down, the moment the patient can lift up the, 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 the leg, you know the power is at least three, again, this just helps you to, to pick up your subtle weakness before you even examine for the power. All right, we know at least there's three over five. Then ma'am, I'm going to ask you, please bend your knee, pull against you, pull against you. Okay, again, that's hip flexion. That was five over five on the left. Again, you do the same, pull against you. Okay, again, that is hip flexion on both sides is five over five, okay? Then the trick with hip extension is that you don't want to pull first, then tell you to 
cool down, cool down. Okay, remember you may they start rising from the bed and now they are struggling. So you want to say pull, push against the bed, push down, don't let me pick you up. Okay, that's the correct technique. Don't let me push you down. Okay, and remember, let the muscle do the work. That's very, very important. Okay, for anything. Okay, then the next thing you want to test for, can you please bend your knee? Remember, is flexing the knee. Pull against your bum, pull against your bum. Okay, all right. Knee flexion is five from a five on the right. Pull against your bum. Okay, knee flexion on both sides is five from a five. Then Remember, you bend the knee for the flexion. So, remember, you let the muscle do the work. And so, keep your limb straight. He's extending the knee, okay? Don't let me bend it. Okay. Don't let me bend it. Okay. Knee extension is five over five on both sides, okay? Then you come to the foot, okay? Would you please do this? That is dorsiflexion. Don't let me push it down. Okay. Again here, okay. So dorsiflexion is five over five on both sides. And finally, plantar flex. Remember, let the muscle do the work, and you oppose it. Okay. Don't let me push you up. Okay. Don't let me push you up. Okay. All right. There are other movements that you can do. Okay. Remember, you want to check for inversion and eversion. Okay. Push me inside. Okay. Again, that's inversion. Okay. Then eversion. Push me out. Okay, the same you can also do it at the foot. Would you please push me in? Okay, and then push me out. Okay, all right, and that should hopefully help you. Okay, so we are moving on to reflexes. Okay, with reflexes, you want to make sure you're having a standard uh, patella hammer. Okay, this is one of the patella hammers we got from Lago Medical. It's really standard, you can get any patella hammer, and it's very important to always have standard ones. These other lighter ones, they do not elicit reflexes very well. And remember the grading of reflexes, zero is absent, one plus is typically reduced, two plus is your normal reflexes, three plus is increased or what call uh, risk, and then four plus is typically when it's associated with cloners. Okay, so what you want to, then I'm just going to lift you up, okay, just relax. So you want to do that just to relax, okay. Then the next thing you want to do is to feel for the tendon, okay. And then you want to go in a very movement while you are looking here. I know it's very tempting to be looking here, but look here for the muscle contraction. So you feel for the tendon and then you hit. I can see this contraction of the muscle. Again, go here for the knee jerk. Just feel for the tendon. Keep looking here. The examiner must see you. And then we can see this contraction there. And then we move on to the ankle reflex. So then I'm just going to ask you to bend in then what you want to do is you hold the end of the foot and you like dorsiflex it very well then again you feel well and you check okay again once you hit you can see this contraction okay all right again the same hand flexes the knee then you stretch out very well again you want to feel the while you are looking you can see this contraction. Okay. The other things that you can do, you can do that. Okay. Typically, you expect a bit of a plantar flexion that you can get. Okay. Another part of reflexes that you want to elicit is cloners. So again, cloners, you want the patient to be relaxed. So just relax. Then the reason why you tilt it like this is just to relax it. Okay. Just relax. Then you quickly pull. Okay, so cloners is when you have at least more than five, okay, of those uh, clonic movement that you see. So if you get five beats, then more than five beats, you have what you call cloners, okay. Then you move on to the other side. And it's very useful to know that cloners is an upper motor neuron sign, okay. Again, we are not seeing those sustained movements that we typically see in cloners, okay. And finally, we text, text for your plantar reflex, what you call the Babinski. Okay, remember, please do not use the sharp object that we normally have on other patella hammers. That's very, very irritating for the patient. Sometimes you can just use your hand, although you can use something a bit more blunt, just not too sharp. Okay, so you want to go in that movement, but very slowly. Okay, you go 
you go okay so we can see that the 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 the, the foot especially the 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 biggest foot is down going okay that's norma so norma is either it doesn't move which you call equivocal or it's down going which we call it's down going if it's up going then that's a sign of upper motor neuron okay again we just want to go there go very slowly okay and you can see that the foot goes down especially the large foot which is the one that we mainly look at it's going down and so babinski is negative it's down going okay. that concludes the end of the reflexes